y'all it's heel heat time hi everybody and welcome to heel heat my name is george coles and this is our tna show for the week let's jump right into it with the so-so segments for the night basically they weren't bad they weren't good they were just there first one the hardy boys matt and jeff versus jesse goddard and djz it's the beginning of a tournament to see who the number one contender will be for the tag championships Okay match, the the Hardys were well into paint by numbers mode where they just threw out their standard match. Uh, just didn't have that much interest to me. Next up we have Bram cutting a promo, calling out Devon. I like Bram, I like the character, the promos, he needs to work on a bit though. This was kind of eh. Leads to a, a brawl, leads to Kurt Angle coming out and saying later on they'll have a match with each other. But, like I said, I like Bram. I think he just needs to work on the promo skills a bit, tighten it up. Next up, also from the tag team tournament, Ethan Carter III and his new bodyguard Tyrus versus Eric Young and Rockstar Spud. Rockstar Spud reluctantly brought to the ring by Eric Young, who sees something in him. This was okay, storyline-wise, okay, everything. I just can't buy that after two years of a dancing dinosaur, you're going to have the former Brodus Clay, now known as Tyrus, as a monster heel. A slow turn to being a monster heel, I would buy. But there's no rhyme or reason. He went from the hip-hop dinosaur, dancing with the Funkadactyls, to to the bad, badass dude that thinks he's the second coming of Big Van Vader. And he's a huge, imposing figure. It's just I don't see it. I don't, they should have brought him in as the goofball and morphed him into the, into this. Not into this right away. Next up, we're going to go into our bad portions of the night. The stuff I just didn't like. And there's really only one thing, and it's kind of the same reason why I don't like any of these segments. The contract signing with with Bobby Roode and Bobby Lashley, Kurt Angle out there, MVP and King as well. It takes up time, it's boring, it doesn't give us action, and it's usually on in the main event where we should be having an excellent match instead of this contrite garbage. To me it's passe, it's boring, it's stupid, it's lazy booking, and I dislike it. Just my opinion. Next up, we're going to our question of the week. Now, the question of the week last week was, who was the greatest tag team of all time? On one hand, we have the Legion of Doom, the Road Warriors. On the other, we have Team 3D, the Dudley Boys. We're going to go into uh, some answers from our friends before I give you mine. First is from Zombies40. I watched both teams and as cool and dominant as the Road Warriors were, best entrance ever, but Team 3D not only wrestled some of the top tag teams ever, like the Hardys, Edge and Christian, Team Canada, Motor City, Beer Money, the Wolves, and won the tag team belts in every company they were in, and still to be wrestling after all these years and still be as good as, there is, as they are is a credit to them. So I guess he's going with the the Dudleys. Next is from our friend Joseph Hatcher. I have to say the Legion of Doom were so I they were so iconic. They had great matches and were so cool to watch. Their only downfall was their mic skills. The Legion of Doom overall I think is the best tag team of all time. Last but not least, our good friend Benjamin Me19. Hey Heel Heat, the Legion of Doom were a great and iconic tag team, but nobody ever wanted to see Animal Hawk, Animal Hawk in a singles match with Austin. I think the Dudleys, Bubba in particular, had to, had that little bit more about them. Bubba has probably been the best heel of the last few years. I agree with that. It may have been that LOD's gimmick was too dependent on the tag team, 
and that getting them singles run would have been starting from scratch where the Dudleys were only bound by name, but in their case, LOD was too restricted as a team, and there really wasn't an option to get them solo run. As tag teams are so close, but I'd say the Dudleys are better because they will be remembered as just a, that bit more than just a tag team. Interesting logic, I actually didn't even think of putting that into con conversation, but it does make a lot of sense if they're even, what separates them from being even. And the solo runs of the Dudley Boys, specifically Bubba or Bully Ray, had been more successful than any of the solo, solo runs of the Road Warriors, either Road Warrior Hawk or Road Warrior Animal. They both had some, but just weren't as successful. I have to go with my boys. The Legion of Doom were my favorite tag team until the Dudley Boys came around. I don't think enough credit is given to them for how much they meant to ECW, how much they meant to WWE, and how much they still mean to TNA. They were one of the huge drawing factors in, in ECW. They're one of the few tag teams that has headlined a pay-per-view in three major companies. They headlined at ECW, they've headlined pay-per-views in WWE, and they've headlined pay-per-views in TNA. What, who else can you say did that? The Road Warriors never were the main event in a pay-per-view, or they may have been, and I might just be forgetting, but I could vividly remember one night stand ECW one I say the WWE put on the main event had Dreamer and the Sandman versus the Dudley Boys the classic confrontation if you know anything about that that is the biggest selling as far as pay-per-view buys non-WrestleMania pay-per-view of all time so they're a tremendous draw and I agree with everything everybody said. They've been tag team champions everywhere they've went. They dominated everywhere they went. I think they're the top of the food chain. I love the Legion of Doom. I think they're great. I think they're one of the greatest tag teams of all time. But just a notch below the Dudley Boys or Team 3D. Just a little bit. I mean, it's kind of apples and oranges. I agree with a lot of the points that have already been made, but I, I prefer, I think the Dudleys, for my money, are the better team. <laughs> now on a somewhat related topic, we seen, as we've seen in Brand's promo and later on in the match that we'll talk about in a minute here, he is being referred to as the King of Hardcore. Now I have certain feelings about that moniker, and I think he's not quite deserving of that. I think he's a good wrestler. I think he's a good hardcore wrestler. It made me think about it, though. My question of the week for this week is, who really is the king of hardcore? Let us know what you think. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down there in the comments. And finally, we're going to get into the good portions of the night, the stuff I actually really like. First up, we have Loki and Samoa Joe versus Samuel Shaw and Gunner. I enjoy the team of Loki and Joe. I think they're a formidable combination. I liked what happened with Shaw and Gunner. We finally get, we see Brittany come out kind of swaying Samuel Shaw against Gunner. She cost Gunner the match. Afterwards, Shaw attacks Gunner. They make out. I think it's going to add a lot to the Samuel Shaw character, which I think is one of the the best characters TNA has. If they keep going on the route they are, they're going in some really cool and interesting territory, in my opinion, with him. And I think I think him splitting from Gunner is just going to make us see more of that more of that uh, stuff that we that he came in with, the stuff he did with Chrissy Hemi and the creepy bastard type stuff. But I think it's cool. I like Samuel Shaw. I, I enjoy the character. I think Gunner is a perfect opponent for him. His intensity versus the psychoticness is going to be something that I think will play out well. Next up, we have Rebel, Rebel heading to the ring for a match versus Angelina Love. Angelina doesn't come up, but Havoc does. Havoc destroys Rebel. 
which brings out Gail Kim. They wrestle around the fight. Havoc leaves her laying again. I think the build they've been doing for Havoc is awesome. I think it's she's an amazing talent. She's an amazingly gifted wrestler. Um, if all you've seen of her is her TNA action, you are going to be in for a real surprise when they actually give her more and more to do other than just be the dominant machine that she is. She's an awesome wrestler and I love what they're doing. I think the build-up's great for her. Next up we had the aforementioned hardcore match, Bram versus Devon. Pretty good solid match, solid interactions. Magnus comes out, throws the assist in, Bram wins with the turnbuckle to the head which seems to be his go-to weapon. I liked it. I think this is the kind of match that you use to build up your younger talent over a guy with a name, a guy that we just mentioned as half of the greatest tag teams of all of half of the greatest tag team of all time. I think it builds Bram up and, and makes him look like a million bucks. Next up we have Mr. Anderson and Chris Melendez versus MVP and Kenny King. The Heels pick up the win. However, Sarge, Chris Melendez looks good in the match. I thought it was a good meeting. I think these are the perfect two or the perfect group for him to be feuding with. Uh, I think they work well. I think there's a lot of there's places that MVP and Kenny King are willing to go that most heel wrestlers won't. And I think that's gonna add to this is gonna make when Melendez actually beats them that much sweeter. But coming off of that, we're going to jump right into our ratings for the week. We have a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. 1's a Dixie Carter, 2's a Rockstar Spud, 3's a Gunner, 4's a James Storm, 5's a Bobby Roode. I'm going to give this show a 3, a Gunner. While there was some stuff I really liked, there was some stuff that I really didn't care about at all. Um, the main segment, really, that knocked the whole point off itself. Just, I'm not a fan of the contract signings. They're stupid, they're boring, they're contrite. Even at, the, even at the best, we see the same thing, which is the two guys attacking each other. Nothing new or interesting has ever hap has happened in them in a long time. Other than uh, The Undertaker sticking a pen through Brock Lesnar's hand, but... Other than that, boring, stupid, silly, wasting my time. I'd much rather see another match, in my opinion. But basically... That's all I have to say about this. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heal Heat.